Hey everybody, my name is Danny Batista and I'm a professional photographer based in San Antonio, Texas. And for the last eight years, my full-time career has been professional photography. I haven't shot a single wedding. I'm not a fan of bridezillas, but I have found a passion and a huge profit in other types of photography. Those five industries of photography that I shoot consistently are automotive, real estate, product, food, and people. Now we're gonna focus on everything but product photography and in doing so, I wanna answer one simple question. How did I achieve success as a photographer without becoming a starving artist? And the reason I wanna talk about this is because in the creative world, photography included, many creatives are not confident in their work. And in fact, a lot of times, creatives place their ego in front of actually creating value for their clients. And this doesn't let them take their next steps to create a life for themselves surrounded around their creative passion. So I'm here to tell you that one of the points of my success as a photographer has always been related to how can I help create your vision with my camera. I sprinkle a little bit of my creative expertise and mastery of equipment to create their vision, not mine. Now that's the value that creates returning clients for me, new clients and profit in my business. With that known, let's talk about why I got into each of these industries and how that created success for me in my own creative business. And I wanna start with automotive photography. So automotive photography presented itself to me as a hobby. I owned a camera, I loved cars, I had always been interested in the customization of automobiles, which led me to find friends that had similar passions for their vehicles. And it was only natural that the guy with the camera, me, would be around taking cool photos for them. So I photographed the things I was surrounded by. I did it in a unique way where I created value for my friends, and that led to potential clients taking notice. Now granted, I was strategically placing myself in the networks of potential clients, creating work that spanned two different goals, number one, as I've already mentioned, I created amazing images for the owners of their cars, but I also chose unique and interesting vehicles with customizations from the clients that I knew needed paid work in the end. So clients like the marketing agency for Sylvania Headlights, private car builders entering their machines into international competitions, magazines that needed professional images of the vehicles they featured so they could sell their magazines to the public, to even rental car companies needing social media content from around the United States in each of the vehicles in their fleet. The amazing thing about this initial process in the automotive world of photography was I never set out to be an automotive photographer. I only wanted to create amazing images that made my friends smile and that made my friends tell people about my work. That made the companies take notice. So when the time came and I was getting requests for automotive photo shoots, I wasn't scared to give my rates. Clients wanted value for their money, which they already saw in my work, and they were willing to pay for that. The next step was just having confidence in saying there was a price to book me. And just like that, I started consistently getting hired for automotive shoots. So what's one thing we can gather from that brief description of my beginnings as an automotive photographer? Number one, surround yourself in a network of individuals that allow you to be naturally creative. Try and choose something that creates a portfolio for paying clients to take notice. And once those clients take notice and ask for your time, do not be afraid to provide your rates. You're ready. I know so many individuals who have gone through their whole life without believing they were ready and they never were. Let's look at the next form of photography that I'm actually professionally shooting to this day, real estate. Interestingly enough, real estate photography and automotive photography are shot very similarly with multiple exposures, off-camera flash, but one of the main differences between the two is houses are getting bought and sold every single day, which means, guess what? There's always a need for photos for homes. Also, there are several clients that can be involved in each home build and sale. You have the architect, the developer, the interior designer, the real estate agent, the brokerage for the real estate agents and marketing agencies. But how did I actually find myself succeeding as a real estate photographer on top of an automotive photographer? It all comes to down to learning a new technique and finding a way to apply that to get myself noticed. So here's the story. Two days prior to my first real estate photo shoot, I learned a few new lighting techniques from YouTube. YouTube is amazing to learn everything you could possibly ever want to learn in this world. I found a staged model home in a nice neighborhood in San Antonio, and I walked into that model home, and unfortunately I lied to the sales representative saying that the developer wanted me to take photos to show them what I can do. And for two hours I used what I learned on YouTube the day before, combined with my previous knowledge of lighting and photographing cars, and I shot the main features of that home, all by myself, nobody bugging me, doing what I knew I could do. I politely said bye to the sales rep when I was done, and went home and edited those photos to the best of my ability, by myself, in my room, and I sent them to the developer who of course wasn't expecting an email with professional images of their model home, I provided their own product as my portfolio. 
I let them know that I was available in the coming weeks if I had any other projects available that needed to be shot, and I gave them a breakdown of how I would price it. I received an email back saying their previous photographer was no longer with them, and they would love to contract me for all their upcoming projects. And from that day forward, I was labeled a real estate photographer. The amazing thing about knowing how to photograph structures like homes is you immediately become able to photograph businesses, commercial projects, pools, luxury homes. There's so many avenues where real estate photography can take you to actually earning income. But let's take a look back at how this can help you find success in your creative career like photography. From this specific example, I think the main point is I politely kicked the door down in the industry I was trying to get into. No one knows you exist until you show them that you exist, and sometimes you need to make a little wave to catch their attention. In my case, I snuck into a luxurious home, I lied my way into an opportunity that could have or could not have benefited me, took the risk, created my own portfolio without asking for permission from the developer, but it turned out to be a win for them and me because I created value for that client. Food photography, the third area of photography that I now shoot professionally. But why food photography? Number one, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. I want to eat everything. Number two, it's another stress-free photo shoot. I didn't mention this in the previous two industries, but the stress level of photographing something is rather low when you can take your time to compose it, arrange it, test it, and shoot it, and food is another prime example of that. Unless it's ice or ice cream, which then I'm sweating because things are melting and clients are getting scared, but for the majority of shoots, food photography is a very stress-free shoot. How did I navigate my way into this industry, though? This one was a little different because I paid my way in. So let me explain that. In this case, I took the initiative of asking for permission without a food portfolio because all I had been shooting was automotive and real estate, and I needed to find a way to have images that showed I had the ability to create value for food manufacturers, restaurants, chefs, food magazines, and any other potential clients. So here's what I did. I found a luxury restaurant, and I set up a meeting with the owner, and I offered to come into their restaurant at the time they preferred, pay for a five-course meal with wine, and in exchange for giving me the space and time to shoot, I provided them with the photos for free. This is a hard offer for any company to pass up because they literally can't lose. I'm buying my meal and I'm giving them the photos. No one says no to that. Now the reason I chose luxury restaurants over an average restaurant is because the chef and team are more likely to prepare and stage the dishes in a way that are already styled for photos. I don't have to do anything but shoot the actual photos. So I get negative space on a large white plate, arranged in an appetizing and minimal way, and that does wonders for the photos without me doing too much work, especially in an industry that I haven't shot before. The client ended up loving the photos, hiring me for future projects, and immediately I had work to show in the food industry. I immediately began creating emails, content, to push out to potential clients across my city, offering my paid services using that one photo shoot from that well-known restaurant in town, and guess what? No one knew whether I got paid for that shoot or not. They definitely didn't know that I paid for that meal and ate it all. But what did they see? They saw the value I created for that restaurant, and immediately I began getting food photography jobs. Rather quickly, actually, I also got the attention of Food Network and was contracted for an eight-city project shooting various restaurants and their famous dishes that have been showcased on TV. I also now had a third industry that I could confidently get paid to photograph. And with that, that allowed me to now have those three industries continually cycle in everything that I was shooting throughout that year. So what can we take from that in your own creative business? In this case, I handpicked the most reputable client I could find in my city, and I provided them with an option of getting free work, and they couldn't refuse that. And it led to big name clients and national clientele in a really short amount of time. Instead of starting on the low end and working my way up to larger clients, I started at the top and helped accelerate my jump into that industry, creating something for me that was very profitable. Lastly, portraits. This is the fourth industry that I want to talk about today, and for me was the last photography genre or industry I found myself being drawn to. This in part was because it required me to meet up and plan a shoot around people. And as you know, a person has feelings, emotions, needs, they expect to look a certain way on camera, especially when you point a camera at them and are taking photos of them. So, a plate of lettuce does not feel this way. I can turn a salad around and it's never gonna ask me what side looks best, but that's my job as a photographer. So this was a whole new world for me. In my mind, these types of shoots became more stressful and were something that I was scared to actually photograph, but that's the important part. Being scared and nervous was something I acknowledged and I wanted to be able to grow and create in that environment, and I hadn't done that before. So here's what I did. I found an avenue 
where individuals needed great photos of themselves in my city, here in San Antonio. I wasn't particularly looking for models, but just attractive, confident, fun individuals. And I found that in Tinder. So for those of you who don't know, Tinder is a dating app, and one of the keys is obviously great photos of yourself to inspire a physical connection in someone. Hopefully you match when they view your profile. And what you really want is obviously amazing photos so they can actually see you and be physically attracted to you in the beginning. But instead of writing individuals and attempting to go on a date, I would write individuals and show them my portfolio related to food, real estate, and automotive to prove to them that I'm the real deal, I'm actually a photographer, but I'd also ask if they'd be interested in helping me build my portfolio. In exchange, I'd be happy to provide them with photos for their profile or social media accounts. And I know, not traditional, but in everything we've talked about today, when have I really been traditional with the methods that I was using to get into these industries? In a very short amount of time, I had a lot of great images and actually new clients by word of mouth from all the females I actually shot for free prior to those shoots. These images helped to build my social media presence, expand my reach into lifestyle imagery, fashion, fine art, and portraits in general. Most importantly, I got over my fear of working with people in front of my lens, and I was able to create a whole new revenue stream from this new type of photography for me. I was now getting hired by marketing agencies, any businesses that needed headshots, companies wanting lifestyle shoots of what happens behind the scenes, billboard music artists, BTS for film production companies, and so much more. And I continue to get these jobs day after day. So what's the takeaway from this? You have to face your fears in order to grow in your creative career. I learn and grow every single time I press my shutter. I dedicate time every single day to learn a new skill. I hone previous skills or attempt something I haven't done before. And portrait photography was all of those things in one. Portraits opened up a whole new door for my business. And with the previous three industries under my belt, there wasn't very much I could say, no, I don't shoot that too. Except for weddings, because I don't shoot bridezillas, and I'll stand by that till the day I die. But my success as a photographer came from being sealed across multiple industries. And this is a very contradictory thing to what you hear most gurus say. Mostly you're hearing people say, do one thing and do it very well. But that wouldn't have created the same kind of success for me. What does that success look like for me though? It's a few different things. So success for me is being booked months out. I do not have to worry if income is on the horizon. I'm always looking ahead at what projects are coming in, and I always know there's money coming in for the creative process that I'm putting out. Success for me is also about being happy and passionate about the images I'm creating, by not shooting the same things every single day. I'm not burnt out on my passion for photography because I'm seeing and shooting different things all the time. You have to understand, I'm regularly in million dollar homes, and while they're all amazing to look at and shoot and see when you're there, if I shot them every single day, I would get burnt out in the first week. I need to see different things for my brain to feel active, happy, and passionate about what I'm doing. Success for me has come from scaling my business, which was once just local, to now being global. I'm booked in states and countries all around the world every single week for different types of shoots that I once only shot in my city. That primarily has come from opening myself up to those new adventures. When someone contacts me for an out-of-state job, I've always found a way to make it work. Instead of saying, no, I'm not based there. So again, I'm tackling new adventures and finding new ways to make those things work. On top of that, being able to be booked consistently during the current pandemic, because my photography focus wasn't just in a single industry. The pandemic did not stop my business. I didn't need a loan to stay afloat, unlike wedding and engagement photographers and event photographers, for example, who are out of and still may be out of many jobs that they were booked for regularly. Lastly, the amount of knowledge and skills I've been able to acquire has allowed me to jump into teaching as an other revenue stream. I'm now giving back to individuals that want to learn the same techniques I've used to build my own business. And now on top of my photography clients, I have students in each city that I go to each week that hire me around the world to teach them how to use photography to supplement their income or to be their full-time career just like me. Being a starving artist in a creative field was never something I thought about. I began my career as a hobby and as a passion to create amazing images for friends, and then I found ways to turn that passion into a business that created value and demand for my clients. And then I expanded those skills into every industry that I could so that I was always learning, always growing, and successful with my own passion to create. The most amazing thing about what I've been able to create for my passion in photography is again, being able to give back to everybody that wants to learn the same kind of thing. I'm able to now grow their businesses the same way that I've grown my business, and now I'm able to provide that worldwide using different techniques that allow me to actually travel state to state to teach them in my own way. 
If anybody is interested in actually learning what I do in my career and want to achieve the same kind of stuff in your photography career, let me know. I'm booked in a different city every single week. I fly to individuals for free. I do not charge anybody for the flight, anybody for the stay, and what I've learned in the past eight years of my full-time career, I now provide to people no matter where they're at. You can find me on dannybatista.com or on Instagram slash dannybatista. I'm available and always ready to answer questions and help anybody out that needs help creating the same kind of career I've created for myself. I love this so much that I literally wake up thinking about it. What can I do to See, make that next thing happen? Yeah. It's that passion to continue to go. So yeah. for me, I don't even think about how many hours I've been spending doing something. Mm -hmm. I don't think about that at all. I literally yeah. wake up and then it's, 12 a.m. I'm like, damn, all right, cool. I got a lot of shit out today. Like, let me keep going with this stuff, you know? Yeah. So sometimes I don't even eat, man. But like, I have to like, I have to like, I have to like, I have to, I have to remind myself, like, you got to, like, I actually had an accident with my knee. Yeah, you're trying, because yeah, trying to get as I'm much out as much as possible. Time yeah. And working all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so I recently was on a shoot and my knee went in and something popped. Ooh. And I, I thought to myself, like, maybe it's how I was walking or what I was doing. But in the end, I found out. It was because I'm not healthy doing what I'm doing. I'm sitting all the time. Yeah. I'm not actually working yeah. myself out, so being moving just, around. Yeah. And I do this all day, right? I'm, I'm doing this, shooting, 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 yeah. bending down, moving. But I'm, the rest of the day, I'm doing this. Yeah. My knee's not doing uh, anything. So that's true. I'm starting to like get into the mode of, okay, I need to dedicate time to my health, dedicate time to my passion, do all this kind of stuff, where at first I was just going laser yeah. focused yeah. down everything. So that's how it's just continuing to do it and not worrying about anything else mm -hmm. I'm single don't have kids like I can just like yeah <laughs> I'm like this man all day. Right. blinders on my face just continue to go so that that's really the main answer it's just I don't stop yeah you know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't stop you heard that kids don't eat no <laughs> yeah. no but honestly it's like it's just really cool that that you're like just honed in all the time man well and one thing I kind of wanted to ask you yeah. backing off of something you said during the shoot was this idea of never really feeling like you're ready and mm. i wanted to ask you how you personally overcome that fear if you have like a mantra or what your process for getting past that initial starting point is you know a lot of people what the people that i teach i find out that a lot of them have various different reasons for not wanting to move forward a lot of them look at their work and compare it to other people right right that's a big thing especially in a creative environment like photography where how does this look compared to what everybody else is shooting am i at the level that everybody else is at and i find that's something i don't do so like i mentioned earlier i'm like this i'm so laser focused on what i'm doing and visualizing what i think i can do better or what maybe i think personally i am not strong at yeah. but i don't do it by comparing to other people i just look at it and go what else can i do next like where else can i go with this i have to determine if i'm ready on my own and that's easier for me to do than going okay that's clearly a professional that's been doing for 10 years that person's been doing for 20 years i'll never get to that level mm. no i just this is where i'm at who's going to accept that who's going to actually pay me for that cool let's go and i continue to get paid by learning and doing instead of just sitting back and going oh in two years right in two right. years maybe i'll get paid for it and most people deny actually people that write them and go hey we'd love to hire you for this yeah and then they even go uh no i can't do it but you could literally get paid to actually do better and they already like your work mm -hmm. but you it's just a mental thing barrier. you broke down that barrier you said i'm gonna come to you yeah and, and that's that's important. that's, uh, that's the important part too because people spend years trying to build up this portfolio find different ways oh, to do it so. waiting for somebody to find them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and instead people need your work people are get, consistently getting hit up by individuals who are offering their abilities and their skills but rarely do people take that advantage of actually doing it and then making it happen and getting paid for it and providing that content and value. So I just was like this. I mean, my answer to a lot of those questions is I don't care what anybody else is doing. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And I just continue to push through and just do it and find the people that want that. I yeah. mean, like that cycle of like being, you know, mentor at, or and having a mentee as well. Yeah. You know, how do, how do you how do you go about that? Like, how's what's your system for like, like t getting teaching clients or how you do that? Yeah, I mean, the first of all, that came around not because I wanted to be a teacher. Right. Right. I didn't ever have any impression of being a teacher in any of this. I was just like, I'm going to focus on being creative, getting stuff done, putting work out there and, and being done with it. Mm -hmm. But I think social media created a big impact mm -hmm. on me. And I would always get DMs and questions and emails about, hey, I see what you're doing. You're inspiring me. I'm not there yet. How can I get there? What can I do? And I was always giving that information out for free. 
Mm -hmm. Right? I never questioned it and said, oh, like we, we talked about earlier. Right. I'm not looking at them and going, ah, no, 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 I'm not telling you what I'm doing because right. then you're going to take my job. Right, exactly. That was never a thing that I thought about. It was always, oh, it's easy. Do this, do this, do this, and I bet you'll find a, re a, a better ability in what you're trying to do. Or, hey, I noticed that you were doing this. Mm -hmm. Take consideration of that person's cheek instead of how you smooth that out. Do this instead, mm -hmm. and I bet you'll find that it actually looks a little bit better. And just giving little tips and tricks. Wow, right? Nice. So from there, I just got started getting hit up so much that I didn't have the time to continue to do it for free. Mm -hmm. So I provided like a curriculum and found a way to actually do like a copy and wow. paste kind of thing that described nice. the rates and what you would learn and how you would learn it and how nice. long it takes and all this kind of stuff that made it a little easier for somebody like me in a small business yeah. who doesn't have time already right. to just dish it out, dish it out, dish it out. Okay, you want it? Cool, here's my next availability. Oh, I'm gonna be in Atlanta anyways, by the way. Perfect, let's do that. Gotcha. And it just started growing into being more than San Antonio. And just being every other city because social media just expanded that growth to where everybody's seeing you. And a lot of people don't have that same like focus. That laser focus, yeah. And so it's my job then to kind of go grab them mm -hmm. and go, look, man, just focus. Look at this, do this and go down this path. And yeah. I'm sure this one thing will elevate you to the next level, no matter what level you're at. Right. Don't think that you're not going to provide that value to somebody. Somebody will want that. People gotcha. are going out there and finding that free work or that paid work mm -hmm. and attempting to get what they need for their own company out of right. some creative individual, whether it's paid or free. Mm -hmm. But you have to just go, okay, where am I right now? How much can I provide? Show the client and communicate, hey, is this what you're looking for? And if they say yes, right. then you can't oh. be scared about it right. anymore. If, yeah, if it, you're right. Exactly. Maybe, like if, if, maybe if you're going to do them. great when the time comes, sure, you can be nervous about, uh -huh. here we go, it's my first job, I'm kind of scared, but you have to like push that to the side and go, okay, mm -hmm. cool, they like what they see, they want this particular project, let me actually do this and give them the best I can. Right. And you'll get paid for it, hopefully, and you'll learn on top of that, and you'll have portfolio, like stuff just grows and grows True. and grows. How do you find that like self-awareness of like, this is what I need to be doing or what, what did that look like for you? That's a really hard question because I wasn't always doing photography. Right. I'm 37 years old right now. I've been doing photography for 15 years, full time for eight years. Mm -hmm. But before that, there were so many different avenues mm -hmm. that led up to that career. Yeah. But they weren't photography related, but they were creative related. Okay. So I'm talking about building websites from scratch, building people's MySpace pages. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it, oh, how old are you that. to know that stuff? You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Like, I'm, I'm getting, I was getting contacted by people I didn't know during MySpace to build out MySpace pages because I was graphically designing stuff and building business cards and doing things like that. So there's always mm -hmm. been some kind of creative aspect to my life, mm -hmm. but I never set on a specific thing. I just kind of pivoted right. and went with the flow. And started gravitating And just towards. gravitating to whatever happened. So, yeah. I mean, it was Legos when I was a kid. You know <laughs> what I mean? Or like running around on my bike, mm -hmm. pretending it's a motorcycle and like dreaming up a scene or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think back to that now and kind of go, maybe that's why I'm like able to narrate photo shoots now and like wow. create these scenes and, wow. and different things. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, Legos, thinking about stories. It was um, doing graphic design, creating web page mock-ups, mm -hmm. building a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. like grabbing a camera and having to shoot some granola bars of a person who's, who's doing a bakery in their own home. It just all started to come together into one thing and photography just happened to fulfill so many of those goals in a creative way that I just went with it. I let it take me. It was like a river. Like, like, I don't even know how to explain that story, but that's like literally like the progression wow. it's over like time. It's like finding your inner child almost. I guess. Like going back to your roots <laughs> and then cool. just letting, you know, writing that. And I always feel like, you meant that's a good point because I always feel like the inner child thing, and you guys see this a lot probably in a lot of little mantras and stuff, that everybody becomes an adult, right? It's like the Peter Pan thing, like mm -hmm. trying to stay away from becoming an adult and right. still thinking and dreaming and being inspired and wanting to create stuff. and. I think that's where I always kind of stuck to and stayed at, yeah. no matter what anybody else was telling me, no matter what corporate jobs were pulling me in that mm -hmm. direction, no matter what. And it led me into what I'm doing now and it just happens to be working. And who knows if that changes into right. something else even more focused. Like, yeah, yeah you know, you're really know. just going with the flow. That's really cool. That's it's awesome. finding, it's finding, I think everybody may not know exactly what they want, but everybody does have a dream. And I think mm -hmm. holding on to that and realizing, oh, I can turn this into something yeah. and I just need to take that next step is, is super important. So. I think one other thing that's important too that I kind of mentioned sometimes whenever it comes up is I people listen to those stories sometimes and they go, oh, he got lucky. Mm -hmm. He walked into that real estate, um, that house, and they offered him the job because he hit him up at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. But the other side of that is I was ready for the opportunity. Right. Like, that's how I think about luck. When anybody right. goes, oh, you got lucky, you were there at the right time. Maybe I was, but I was also ready to take advantage of it and I wasn't scared to take advantage of it. Or I was scared to take advantage of it and I was like, 
screw it <laughs> and just I'll go and, it, and, and do it man let yeah. me do it so that's really cool. i think it's being ready for that opportunity and everything I had done prior, all the stuff I learned, all the little hobbies I was doing, everything that I was having fun creating in the past, mm -hmm. all gathered into one huge little pocket of things. And when the time came, I was like, oh, let me pull from this, let me pull from that, let me pull from that, let me do this and make it happen. And lo and behold, it worked, right? Like, wow. so I don't believe in luck. I truly believe <laughs> nice. in like building it's yourself destiny. up. It's destiny, yeah. it's destiny. It's the choices ready. you make. Yeah. It's the choices and you make. And it just everything. happens to happen, so. I'm excited about it. it. It's really turned into something amazing and it's continuing to grow and it's mm. it's requiring me to like grow myself into levels that I didn't expect to be in and wow. you know scaling is now the biggest thing I'm trying to manage because I can't be everywhere at once. Yeah, that's, that's right? the thing. That's also what I was think, thinking about with the teaching like because you're doing it that all in person, right? Right. Wow. That was, and that's the thing. Nobody wow. else is really doing the in-person stuff. They're yeah. trying to figure out ways to sit in their home and actually do it remotely. Exactly. Or do a video that, so, which by the way, is an amazing thing that, you sh that I should be doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I totally think that's the next step for me. But mm -hmm. I think the main thing that put me into all these cities and put me into a position to actually meet new people and mm -hmm. actually create a bigger business was people can look at me and go, damn, he's actually gonna come to me, mm -hmm. sit yeah. down next to me in my house, in my car, in a hotel room, whatever it is, wow. and teach me in person, which by the way, the pandemic has made yeah, me have to mm -hmm. sit into a car in the rain in a city because no coffee shops are open and we're learning side by side into a plug that's like an inverter into my car that you know what I mean like yo you're the that's next crazy. level that's but, crazy. but there's no I have no choice right I have people booking you're me out make it three work. months out and wow. the day has finally come mm -hmm. and it's raining outside so we can't be shooting outside or the pandemic hits and now all coffee shops just closed down for the second stage or whatever's right. going on Wow. Right, so that's awesome. It's There's on a lot me. of other obstacles you're kind of oh overcoming along the way, and that's so many. That's, that's super impressive. impressive. So many, which is why I'm going to be building a van, ah, dude. That's awesome. Oh yeah, that's I've been project. thinking about doing that van life. Too. Van life, and I'm going to be able to have a center in there where we can we can actually no matter where we're at actually do that. Dude, that's sick. So this is all stuff. Man. You're putting <laughs> it like, on the wheels. That's no, that yeah. that would be like that sounds so perfect for being mobile and flexible, which I right. think is so important. Like you said. Flexible in anything, actually, yeah. from everything I've talked about today, I mean, the flexibility of it is what I think allowed me to do that, but mm. that's my next thought, is because I'm spending a lot of money on hotels and flights, right? right? And it, the, mon the, the jobs are paying for them, right? and making more profit on top of them, but imagine if I could stay in a city for a, a month, mm -hmm. doing the same thing I did here in San Antonio, right? and have availability where, hey, I'm in LA for the entire month of January. If you need me, let me know and set up the same kind of stuff I was already doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now I can book those projects without being scared about not being there for the week that they want them shot or right. pushing the project back because of rain or whatever it might be, I'm already there. And I'm in my own domicile living arrangement that I can also yeah, sit and do whatever no, I want. And so that's the next step. Fingers crossed, don't jinx me. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's. I think it comes down to the choices and then just being goal oriented, thinking about the future, not in a way that gives you anxiety about, you know, not being able to do things or what's going to happen, but you're just continually moving forward. Right. And that's awesome. That's Which awesome. is what I try to instill in other people. That's good. You know what I mean? What I try to instill in other people, what I hope stuff like this instills in other people, even though I blaze through it. Yeah. Um, still I really, finding the balance. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> I want people to still take that and get inspired by it. And I'm, I'm finding that people are. Mm -hmm. They're telling me that, right? I'm not telling. I'm not sitting here telling you. I know people are getting inspired and they're getting motivated. People write me, mm -hmm. and they tell me these things and, and provide that info back to me. And that's awesome. It's a side point because I never go into it actually thinking that. I'm mm -hmm. just so excited about what I'm doing and I'm talking to you and helping right. you. And this is how it can be done. This is how I did it. And smiles and everything. And people leave like they got out of church, man. Like, <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, that's how I can think about it. They leave and they go. I'm ready. Wow. You know what I mean? they that's go awesome. Do it. So. It's worked. It's ha it's it's an awesome experience. It's really cool. That's awesome. Damn. Well, thanks, Danny. Appreciate you, man. It's awesome getting <laughs> to talk to you. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. Awesome. Super cool. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs>